the English Channel has kept us safe for a thousand years. On the 31st of December 2020, we are once again becoming an independent island nation. Dover is, and always has been, a busy port for both freight and people. But this year, it has also become a place where the UK Border Force operates what is basically a taxi service for illegal immigrants. Despite claims by the government, the UK Border Force are operating this taxi service in cooperation with the French authorities. This Sky News report exposes just what is happening. We counted 13 on board, some waving and shouting to us. Shadowing it, the French patrol vessel Aramis, which had been with it since it left the beach near Calais two hours earlier, and from what we could see, was making no attempt to intercept the boat. The border force vessel Speedwell arrived on scene soon after the migrants crossed into UK waters. We can see the French patrol boat Aramis circling the area, while the Border Force vessel Speedwell is now down in front of the migrants' boat. They've just got them to stop their engines. They're about to try to get the migrants from that boat transferred onto their vessel. UK authorities say their French partners are as committed to stopping migrant crossings as they are, but those who know these waters aren't as convinced. To be honest, that's not the first time I've seen that. It's quite regular, um, you know, that they, they don't seem so interested in stopping the vessels as they do sort of escorting them across. This was one of seven migrant boats intercepted during our time in the Channel. Coast Guard helicopters, a spotter plane, three border force vessels and a lifeboat were all involved. The illegal immigrant boat crossings in the first few months of 2020 exceeded the whole of last year's figures. And now with record numbers crossing the channel by boat, let's examine just what pledge our Home Secretary gave us last September. That was the pledge. So not only are record numbers coming over the English Channel, but the taxi service, the free taxi service, that our government border force are operating with the French authorities, they wish to keep quiet. In fact, when Nigel Farage went out in a boat to see what was happening here, the border force threatened him with commandeering the boat. Almost certainly an illegal threat. But why do they want to cover it up? Well, with silly statements like this from the Home Office, it seems that the Home Office preferred to pretend there is cooperation in stopping these illegal immigrants with France rather than cooperation enabling it to happen. The statements such as this from the Home Office are simply words. The words that belie the actual facts of what is happening in the Channel. And of course, to make matters even worse, there's been a serious decline in the number of failed asylum seekers that we managed to return. In fact, we only manage to return on average roughly about one in 20. The Dublin Agreement states that the asylum seeker should take refuge in the first safe country they come to. So by definition, all the migrants crossing in boats over the channel have passed through many countries that have been safe, but they're choosing to come to the UK. Further, the Dublin Convention states fingerprints should be taken when they arrive in the first country. This means that they can be traced back and then returned to that first country. However, in 2010, after attempting to take fingerprints, there was so much violence from the asylum seekers that the staff, and they argue the asylum seekers, were endangered. But now Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, has called for fingerprinting again. And she has been warned. This can cause violence, and the staff taking the fingerprints are subject to that violence. So in other words, the asylum seekers are simply refusing to obey the law and simply refusing to be recognised because it doesn't seem to be in their interest and we are giving in to this violence.
I'd like to read you a short statement. Yesterday, Saturday the 20th of June, short, a short time after 7 p.m., a man ran into Forbury Gardens in the centre of Reading and attacked members of the public with a knife. He left three dead and a number of people needing a hospital. And this morning, I can formally confirm that this was declared a terrorist incident at 08.30 as a result of those investigations through the night. And according to the Daily Mail, five foreign prisoners are released every day onto our streets. And this Reading killer was released just 16 days before he killed. Friday lunchtime in the centre of Glasgow. This was a chaotic, harrowing scene. Armed police officers rushed to the Park Inn. Inside the hotel, they shot a man dead, but not before a number of people had been stabbed. Witnesses heard at least one shot fired and spoke of a blood-strewn scene. Whilst this was not a terrorist attack, it was an attack by an asylum seeker, an asylum seeker who came to this country illegally and was housed in a Glasgow hotel. This totally uncontrolled, illegal immigration, which we're helping into our country, is not just an affront to the indigenous population of the UK, but above all, it's an affront to the legal immigrants who work hard, form part of our community, and accept our Western values. The problem of immigrants not accepting our Western values is really now significant. We are almost in an uncontrollable situation. We know who bears the enormous cost of all this, both in terms of lives and money. And that is you, the citizens of the UK. But who is to blame? Who is really to blame for this situation? And the answer may surprise you, because it's you. The UK public, you have continually voted governments in that continually just ignore common sense and continually refuse to act and keep their pledges and promises. In fact, to even keep us safe, the first duty of any government. But there is a party that if you give it your vote, will keep pledges. If you give it your vote, will enforce our borders. And that party is for Britain. And don't be confused by the media hype calling for Britain far right calling for Britain racist, etc. It is anything but. And if you're interested in really solving the governance of this country, then we ask you to just take a look at the For Britain Manifesto. So go to our site, have a look at the manifesto, and tell us, tell us what you disagree with. Our members vote on the policies. That's how For Britain works. We look forward to welcoming you Above all, welcoming your vote, because it is only via the polling station that we can bring about the change that Britain so much needs. Vote for Britain, because it is for Britain.